Keanu Reeves is back in action and he's ready to blow everyone away once again, John Wick 4 will be here next year in all its glory. The director claims it will be the longest movie in the series. And thankfully, this isn't without a good reason and we're here to tell you exactly that. Keep watching this video to find out all the deets. First of all, John Wick is back. Keanu Reeves has again stepped back into Wick's shoes, with the film celebrating its eighth anniversary. Judging from the trailer alone, we know it will be a wild ride. As it always is, the legendary hitman takes his fight against the high table global, and he seeks out the most influential players in the underworld. Honestly, considering how the third movie ended, we are extremely excited. Other cast members could also return from the previous films, but that's not been announced yet. Plot details are currently unknown, but we know how John Wick movies are. It's always less about the plot and more about the feeling, and that feeling is pure unadulterated thrill. The fourth installment was filmed last year from the 28th of June to the 27th of October. And guess what? It was filmed in New York, Japan, Paris, and Berlin. Imagine being a part of that cast. You'd literally get to go to some of the most iconic places in the world and shoot scenes with Keanu himself. Doesn't it sound like a dream? So, what does the director have to say? Stahelski and his team are in the final stages of the movie. Once all other things are done, only the music and VFX will be left to add. He also noted that this would be the longest movie out of the franchise so far. The first film was 101 minutes long, the second was 122 minutes, and the third was 131 minutes long. He explained some things on the red carpet while attending a premiere of a movie he produced. These extra minutes are significant, according to him. He loves mythology, and he sure does love an exciting myth. He doesn't believe in the three-act structure for the John Wick movies. Plus, he thinks telling the story and letting it go is more critical. Apart from that, he claims that everyone has always seen John Wick as Odysseus, and this is why he wants to take the time to tell the story. He also said, said jokingly that the film would keep going if one didn't fall asleep watching it, but there is a bathroom limit at the end. Now normally, we'd say that a two-hour plus movie is kind of excessive, but this is John Wick we're talking about. We've come out of every single installment wanting more and more. So it comes back to Chad, who wants to take his time to portray another adventure featuring the character of modern Odysseus properly. And Chapter 4 will dive deeper than ever into the franchise's mythology. And let's talk about the action sequences plus some other details. When the first part came back in 2014, no one would have envisioned the hit it'll be. But surprisingly, critics loved it, and it was greenlit for a sequel. The seeds of world building in the first movie have now blossomed. We're looking into elements like the high table, and even more rules for the Continental Hotel chain, which caters to assassins. Stahelski was also questioned about the process of filming certain sequences, specifically if some of them were easy to shoot. To this, he replied that it's not just action they have to struggle with, as everything from blocking to the full effect of the scene is hard to film. There are some practical obstacles in the movie that were also difficult to solve. Many things can mess with you, like you can't control the weather. Putting all the pieces together and then editing scenes is harder than the team thought, but the right people were the key to solving all of this, which is why the movie is reaching the completion stage. Plus, when is the exact release date? The movie will arrive in theaters on the 23rd of March next year. We'll also see Bill Skarsgård and Scott Atkins in significant roles. Also, the fifth part of the franchise is on the way. Plus, the director says that the studio intends to continue the franchise. Besides, this fictional world will be expanded through the Anna de Armas-led Ballerina spin-off and the Continental Event series. Now, on to other news. First of all, Bullet Train had the wrong protagonist. Bullet Train is super fun to watch, a thrilling ride involving murder, comedy, and great action. The movie stars the one and only Brad Pitt in the leading role, but we think the film would have been better if it followed a different main character. Ladybug is a peace-seeking hitman whose bad luck keeps him stuck on a train filled with all sorts of threats. The movie boasts a star-studded cast with several impressive cameos, plus there are problems with the overall pace, but the twists and turns make up for it. Now onto the vital bit, Lemon and Tangerine would have made more engaging protagonists than Pitt's Ladybug. The twins put on quite a performance, which involved dynamic dialogue and emotional depth. We're not saying that Pitt should have not been a part of the film, but it would have been better to keep him on the sidelines. So where do we leave Lemon and Tangerine? According to us, Henry and Taylor Johnson should reprise their roles for a prequel. Both the characters are assassins, and they make quite a duo. Besides, their spin-off would prove to be a more compelling and watchable origin story. Story. Time to back up this logic. The most emotionally hitting moments in the film were Lemon's assumed death and Tangerine's actual death. So yeah, we really hope to get to see more of these characters. Next, the John Wick director wants to make the Ghosts of Tsushima movie. Director Chad Stahelski says he wants to make a movie 
and Japanese, and Sony is on board with the choice. Sony reportedly tasked Stahelski with turning the hit samurai game into a movie. The film will be in Japanese and will include an entirely Japanese cast. In an interview with Collider, he said this project would be visually stunning. Yes, Chad, we expect nothing less from you. Plus, it'll be much more character-driven than some of his other stuff. He also revealed that he's been going to Japan since he was 16. His love for the country, culture, and people is why he wants to pursue this. You might think this is a bold move, but recently, Bong Joon-ho's Parasite and Squid Game have shown that audiences are willing to watch subtitle films and TV shows. Still, it'll be financially risky for a Hollywood-made blockbuster to be made in anything other than English. The director acknowledged this, saying no one would give him $200 million to do a technology movie without speaking English. So, he'll have to be clever and figure out how to make something epic out of this. If we dive a little deeper, it's a gamble for Chad, Song, and PlayStation games. But in our opinion, it's the right thing to do. Plus, times have changed. Like we said, people are more and more interested in watching stuff in different languages. So we have no doubts that if this does come out, it will be a success. Finally, the Pac-Man live-action movie raises questions. According to an exclusive report, Bandai Namco and Wayfarer Studios are launching a Pac-Man movie. This will be a live-action adaptation, and there's much to chew on. The best-selling game franchises are coming to the big screen. Sonic the Hedgehog has appeared in a couple of movies since 2020. Plus, it's scheduled for a third one. But this franchise has a lot going on regarding the overall storyline. Fans have many questions regarding the Pac-Man live adaptation, starting from why? Like, who is even asking for this? The game is an arcade classic, but what can we expect from a character who flees from ghosts and devours them? The default version of the game is minimal, a yellow mouth just floating around hallways waiting for 2D ghosts. But it's designed with such simplicity to appeal to a broad audience. All of this raises the stakes of the live-action movie adaptation even more. Toru Iwatani drew inspiration from a haiku by Matsuo Basho. It translates to, so tranquil is the area that the sound of cicadas seep into the rocks. So how can Iwatani's game become a real-life setting with actual actors? The renderings of the titular hero from the short-lived TV series by Hanna-Barbera can be used. Pac-Man's famed maw was accompanied by a tongue, arms, nose, and legs. This feels like a somewhat workable version of the character in a real-life environment. We have to say, it sounds like this movie is going to be all kinds of weird, and we're here for it, and who knows, it might even turn out to be good. That's a wrap for this video. Are you excited for John Wick 4? Let us know in the comments below. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. We'll see you in the next one.